everybody and welcome to the first ever tie talk for game of thrones episode four um the last of the starks i'm gonna just jump right in okay so episode opened with um the people in the north mourning those that they lost during the battle for winterfell um and they were setting them on fire i guess they was like if the night king do come back we want to make sure there's no bodies for you to turn back into White Walker. So, um, they burned them. Um, you had some really nice moments with some of the characters that were still alive, like Sansa um, going over to Theon and giving him a Stark pin. Um, you had Daenerys, of course, with um, Jorah. But for me, all it did was really emphasize how I felt like, even though it was dark in when. In the last episode, those deaths were not that impactful. I don't feel like they had a big impact on the story. I don't feel like that they are having a big impact on the characters and their decisions moving forward. Um, you think about it, it was Theon, Jorah, um, Lyanna Mormont, the little from Bear Island, that girl. Um, Ed from the Night's Watch, Beric, I think that's his name, with the flaming sword that came back alive like seven or eight times, the one that saved Arya, um, and then the Red Woman. A um, bunch of, other than maybe Theon and maybe Jorah, see, D-level characters. Um, and then they didn't even really... Um, you had a little scene with Davos talking about the Red Woman today, but she didn't really get her due, which she did a lot in that last episode. But the death was really cheap. It was no, unlike the death that happened in this episode, I don't feel like there's no further impact on like what those deaths did to the characters that were remaining. Um, so after that, um, just to push it along, just like I feel like 30 minutes within the show, I had forgot about all those people who had died. Seemed like the characters forgot too because they went right along. I don't know if it was a celebration or if it was a repast, but they was drunk as hell. They was lit. Everybody was drunk. Even John was drunk. Had Brienne drinking. Tormund got wine coming down his beard. Pissy drunk. Everybody. Um, but it was some nice moments during this time or interesting moments. There was a lot going on. You had Danny trying to be strategic. Um, and she declares Gendry is no longer a bastard. He is now Gendry Baratheon, Lord of Storms in, I believe. Um, you also got her sitting there being very paranoid. While everybody giving Jon Snow all this praise. Um, really paranoid. She was very paranoid. You had Sansa giving side eyes about everything. I don't know what she was giving side eyes for. Um, then she had a nice moment with the Hound where she talked about, um, he was like, you will never be, um, you could have, I remember when you was just a little dove, a little bird. I think he said he didn't say little dove. Cersei says little dove, but he said little bird. And she was like, what, um, if I would have left Winterfell with you, or if I would have left King's Landing with you that day. I would probably still be that little bird, which was interesting thinking about her journey, which I appreciate a lot more after my second watch through. Um, and then you have, of course, Tyrion with his famous drinking game where he tell the truth about somebody and make them drink. And that ended up with him saying that Brienne was a virgin. She didn't drink. She got up, left. And then sure enough, Jamie got up and followed her. Um, Tormund started crying. He was that heartbroken. Um, but Jamie followed Brienne up to her room, got her drinking some more, laid down this smooth game, talking about it's hot in here, like, let me take off this shirt, da da da, acting like he can't take his shirt off. And eventually, he pops Brienne's cherry. And so, I for one, I know they've been building up this type of, there were some type of feelings there, not necessarily romantic from both of them, could have been romantic, but they've been building up some type of connection from them ever since, 
you know, he like saved her from getting raped back in like season two or season three, I think. Um, and so he saved her from that. And then he, but I just felt like this moment for them was cheap to have them consummate their relationship in this way. I felt like him knighting her in episode two was much more intimate and much more significant than him running up there to have sex with her when he found out she's not a virgin. As that she is a virgin. Especially that he leaves her by the end of the episode and got her like I seen some funny tweets about she's standing outside in the cold in her house cold and a bit, a bit like I bet a bunch of y'all have seen this picture before, which is horrible. But yeah, so I didn't really like that moment. I don't know if he left her at the end and he lied to her about just still being so in love with Cersei. Just to, So I don't really know what his motives are. I don't know if he's really going to save Cersei. Is he going because he feel like he's the only one who can stop her. But whatever he did, he left Brienne outside in the snow crying. Um, yeah. Horrible moment. And it really, when you think about also reflecting back to early... With Gendry, with how he ran and like proposed to Arya, um, two strong woman characters that both gave up their virginity to these characters, but then had very different responses to both of those to them. Um, so it's very interesting seeing the dynamic between what Arya did and what Brienne did. Um, Brienne is a lot older in life, so maybe that her age may have played a part into that as well. Um, yeah. And I think after that, you just move into the stuff with Danny and John. Danny being really... I said this early in the season when I think it was like the first episode when Danny and John went riding on the dragons together and she was like, I love you. I can stay at this fountain forever for a thousand years. Um... I have never heard Danny in this uh, in this show. I think maybe until this season ever tell anybody she loves them, other than saying she loves her dragons. I've never seen her say that. And so for her to have a scene with John like she did in this episode where she's saying "I love you" one minute, the next minute she was like, "No, this is the only way we're gonna be together." I just her emotional roller coaster right now and them setting her up on this mad queen ride I it's not earned. Um and so I I think I'll talk about that a little later, but um essentially she told John, don't tell nobody, this is the only way we're gonna be together. Um and of course what he do, because Jon Snow knows nothing, he told his sisters. And Sansa, I mean, it wasn't even 10 minutes later in the episode, Sansa and I already told Tyrion. So, and you saw how that go. Um, but I do find a point interesting that, um, going back to Danny, so they had a meeting, which I think this was the motivation that Sansa ended up using to go ahead and tell, but... They had a meeting talking about their war plans for King's Landing. And they was like, oh, half the door Thraki gone, which I don't believe because all them lights went out last week. Half the Unsullied gone, half the North is gone. So they lost half their troops. Uh, and Sansa was like, well, you shouldn't go right now. You should give all the troops time to recover. And Daenerys was like, y'all want to back out now? I don't want to help this and da 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 da. And it's interesting because. Sansa, I mean, Daenerys has never listened to another female character other than Masande. Um, she's never listened to another female character. Um, and it keeps, for me, it keep, I keep seeing her get in trouble because she keeps following the advice of the men. Um, 